It was a sunny afternoon when Jasmine dragged me into the bustling heart of the shopping district. The streets were alive with the chatter of people and the vibrant displays of storefronts. Jasmine, with her eyes sparkling with excitement, seemed to feed off the energy, her enthusiasm palpable. She held my hand, pulling me from one shop to another, her laughter echoing in my ears. I, on the other hand, felt a weariness settling in my bones. The array of clothes, the endless choices, and the constant movement felt overwhelming. Each store we entered seemed like a maze of colors and fabrics, with Jasmine darting through the racks, picking out outfits with an artist's precision. She saw beauty and potential in every piece, while I saw question marks and confusion. Why do I need these clothes, Jasmine? I found myself asking, not for the first time. My wardrobe at home was filled with comfortable, familiar items, none of which screamed for attention or demanded the gaze of the public. They were tomboyish, yes, but they felt like me. Jasmine's response was always the same, a dismissive wave of her hand and a look that seemed to pierce through my facade. You're not seeing what I see, she'd say, her voice a mix of affection and exasperation. There's a different you waiting to be expressed, to be seen. As we continued our shopping expedition, I couldn't shake off the fatigue that clung to me, nor the growing sense of dissonance between Jasmine's vision and my own comfort. Her enthusiasm was a force of nature, sweeping away my protests and doubts, leaving me adrift in a sea of skirts, blouses, and accessories that felt alien to my touch. Yet despite my tiredness and confusion, a part of me was curious. What did Jasmine see that I didn't? Was there really another version of me, hidden beneath the surface, waiting to be unveiled through these unfamiliar clothes? With each piece that Jasmine held up to the light, I found myself searching for glimpses of this unseen self, wondering if perhaps there was more to me than I had ever allowed myself to explore. As the day wore on and our shopping bags multiplied, Jasmine's excitement never waned. But amidst the whirlwind of her enthusiasm, a bombshell dropped that sent shockwaves through my already frayed nerves. I cleared out your old wardrobe, Jasmine casually mentioned, her eyes scanning a rack of vibrant dresses. Those old clothes weren't you anymore. Her words hit me like a cold splash of water. You did what? I gasped, my voice a mix of disbelief and rising panic. The thought of my comfortable jeans, my worn-out tees, and my favorite sneakers all gone felt like a betrayal of the highest order. Those clothes were more than fabric. They were my sanctuary, a cocoon of familiarity in a world that often felt too loud, too bright, too much. Jasmine, sensing my distress, turned to face me, her expression softening. Listen, she said, her voice gentle. You've been hiding in those baggy clothes for too long. It's time the world saw the real you, the you that's been waiting to shine. But her words, meant to be comforting, only twisted the knife deeper. Who was she to decide who the real me was? The conflict between us grew palpable, stretching the air taut. I felt exposed, as if she had stripped away my defenses, leaving me vulnerable and raw. The clothes she deemed unfit were my armor, and without them, I felt naked and uncertain. The more we talked, the more I realized how wide the gap between us had grown. Jasmine saw my tomboy attire as a shell to be shed, while I viewed it as an expression of my true self. The clash of our perspectives left me reeling, torn between the safety of my past and the unknown future she was offering. Emotions swirled within me, anger, betrayal, confusion, and a deep-seated fear of losing my identity. I grappled with the feeling of being unseen by someone so close, someone who was supposed to understand me. The day that had started with the promise of fun and camaraderie had spiraled into an emotional turmoil, leaving me to question not just my wardrobe choices, but my very sense of self. As we delved deeper into the labyrinth of stores, Jasmine's fervor for reinventing my wardrobe escalated. She paraded an array of feminine attire before me, heels that seemed to defy gravity, tights in every conceivable pattern, skirts that fluttered with the slightest breeze, an arsenal of makeup, and, most strikingly, a pair of glossy red boots that seemed to shout confidence. Each item Jasmine presented felt like a challenge, a question mark against my identity. Imagine how stunning you'll look in these, she would say, 
holding up a skirt with an expectant smile. But the reflection in the mirror didn't look like me. It looked like someone else, someone Jasmine imagined I could be. I felt cornered, trapped in a narrative I hadn't chosen. The relentless push for transformation, for adopting a persona so starkly different from my own, sparked a resistance in me. Jasmine, why do I need all these things? I asked, my voice a mix of confusion and frustration. What's wrong with the way I dress? But Jasmine, caught in her vision, brushed off my concerns. It's not about right or wrong, she insisted. It's about showing the world the best version of you. The cost of this transformation wasn't just financial. It was a price paid in pieces of my identity, chipped away with each garment and accessory. I wondered, as we moved from one shop to another, if the mounting bills were a metaphor for the growing distance between who I was and who Jasmine believed I could be. The weight of the bags in my hands mirrored the heaviness in my heart. The more Jasmine pushed, the more I retreated inward, questioning not only the necessity of these clothes, but also the nature of our friendship. Was she seeing me for who I truly was, or was I just a project for her to complete? The day's shopping spree felt less like an adventure and more like a journey through a maze where every turn led further away from my true self. The dilemma deepened with every step, every purchase, leaving me to wonder where the line between friendship and control blurred and at what point I had lost my voice in the clamor of Jasmine's vision for me. In the maelstrom of fabrics and colors, Jasmine's vision for me became increasingly ambitious. She flitted between aisles, her hands brushing against silk and satin, picking out garments that seemed to belong in a different world, heels that towered like skyscrapers, tights with intricate patterns, skirts that swayed with the slightest movement, and makeup in every shade imaginable. And then the red boots, bold, unmistakable, and utterly foreign to me. Each item she presented felt like a challenge, a question mark against my identity. Try these, she urged, her eyes alight with a vision of me that I struggled to see. The pressure mounted, the air between us charged with unspoken tension. I was cornered, trapped between her expectations and my own crumbling sense of self. But why, Jasmine? I pleaded, my voice tinged with desperation. Why do I need to change so drastically, and how can we afford all this? The answer came like a thunderclap, shattering the veneer of our day's escapade. Don't worry about the cost, Jasmine said with a dismissive flick of her wrist, her tone nonchalant. I'm using my ex-boyfriend's credit card. He won't mind or notice. He deserves this anyway after how he treated me. Her words hung in the air, heavy with implications. The realization that Jasmine was not only reshaping my identity, but also enacting revenge through these purchases left me stunned. It was a double betrayal using me as a pawn in her vendetta against her ex, while disregarding my feelings and autonomy. The layers of her motivations began to unravel, revealing a complex web of hurt, anger, and retribution. The shock of this revelation made me see Jasmine in a new light. Her enthusiasm for transforming me was interwoven with her own pain and desire for payback. I stood there, grappling with a cascade of emotions, betrayal, sympathy, confusion, and a dawning understanding of the tangled threads of her actions. Our friendship, once simple and joyful, had morphed into a complex dance of hidden agendas and unspoken truths. The weight of this realization pressed down on me, leaving me to navigate the murky waters of our relationship, wondering where we could possibly go from here. The air around us became thick with tension. The once lively atmosphere of the shopping mall now felt oppressive, suffocating, as I stood amidst the piles of clothes and shoes Jasmine had chosen, a sense of dread settled in the pit of my stomach. The reality of the situation was like a cold, hard slap. Not only had my wardrobe been unilaterally changed, but the means to this end were shadowed by deceit and illegality. Jasmine, oblivious to my internal turmoil, continued to parade garments before me. Her actions now tinged with a darker hue in the light of her recent confession. Each piece of clothing, each swipe of the credit card, felt like an endorsement of her vengeful scheme against her ex. The excitement she exuded was a stark contrast to the growing unease gnawing at my conscience. 
The gravity of the situation began to fully dawn on me. This was not just about clothes or changing styles. It was about ethics, about right and wrong. Jasmine's behavior, once seen as quirky and eccentric, now revealed itself as manipulative and selfish. Her willingness to drag me into her personal vendetta, to use me as an instrument of her revenge, sparked a cocktail of emotions within me. Anger, disappointment, betrayal. As we moved from store to store, my movements became mechanical, my responses to her selections automatic, devoid of the enthusiasm that had initially fueled our outing. The vibrant colors and textures of the clothing blurred into a miasma of insignificance. My thoughts churned with the implications of our actions today, Jasmine's recklessness and my complicity in it. The tension between us grew, a silent chasm that widened with every swipe of the stolen card. The joy of shopping, once a shared pleasure between friends, had transformed into a fraught battleground of morals and identity. I struggled with the dichotomy of my fading trust in Jasmine and the remnants of our friendship, which had once seemed unshakable. In this whirlwind of emotions, I found myself at a crossroads, caught between the loyalty to a friend and the moral compass that guided me. The escalating tension was not just about the clothes or the credit card, it was a mirror reflecting the deeper conflicts of loyalty, identity, and ethics that I now faced. The day's shopping spree, once an adventure, had turned into a labyrinth of moral dilemmas and emotional upheaval. As the sun began to dip, casting long shadows over the city, Jasmine and I found ourselves sitting in a quiet corner of a cafe, surrounded by our many purchases. The chatter and clink of cups around us felt distant, as if we were in a bubble of our own strained silence. The weight of the day's revelations sat heavily between us. Jasmine, usually so vibrant and commanding, seemed smaller somehow, her eyes avoiding mine, perhaps aware of the storm she had stirred within me. The realization of her actions and their impact on our friendship loomed large, demanding attention and resolution. I was torn, caught in a tumult of emotions. Anger simmered within me, not just for the betrayal, but for the manipulation of our friendship and the blatant disregard for my autonomy. Yet, underneath the anger, there was a thread of sadness, a mourning for the simplicity and joy our friendship once held. The climax of our day, our friendship, and this journey of self-discovery forced me into introspection. What did I see in the mirror Jasmine held up to me? Was there truth in her insistence on unveiling a hidden side of my identity, or was it merely a projection of her desires and unfulfilled aspirations? As I sifted through the tangled emotions, a transformation began to take shape within me. It was not the drastic change in appearance that Jasmine envisioned, but an internal shift, a clearer understanding of who I was and who I wanted to be. The clothes, the makeup, the accessories, these were but external trappings. The real transformation was happening in the quiet spaces of my mind, where I grappled with my values, my identity, and the nature of our friendship. Deciding how to deal with Jasmine's betrayal became a secondary concern to the more profound journey of self-realization I was undergoing. The conversation that ensued was difficult, filled with admissions of hurt, expressions of understanding, and the painful acknowledgement of the need for boundaries and respect. Our friendship, like the day, had transformed. The easy, carefree connection we once shared had evolved into something more complex, tinged with pain, but also with a deeper understanding. As we navigated the aftermath of our actions, the evolving dynamics of our relationship mirrored my own journey of self-discovery, a path marked by the painful shedding of illusions and the slow, deliberate steps toward genuine self-acceptance and authenticity. The climax of our story unfolded in the quiet aftermath of the day's chaos. As the adrenaline of the shopping spree ebbed away, replaced by a heavy silence, the full impact of Jasmine's actions and my own passive complicity became painfully clear. The once bright and bustling world of the mall felt like a distant memory as we sat amidst the bags of purchased items, symbols of our strained friendship and conflicting identities. The air between us was thick with unsaid words and unacknowledged tensions. I looked at Jasmine, really looked at her, seeing beyond the facade of confidence and control. There was a vulnerability in her eyes, a shadow of regret or perhaps fear of the repercussions of her actions. 
It was a moment of stark clarity, a crossroads for both of us. Confronting Jasmine, I voiced the turmoil swirling within me. My words, laced with hurt and confusion, poured out, questioning not just her deceit, but the very foundation of our relationship. How could you do this? I asked, my voice a fragile thread of betrayal and disbelief. Was our friendship always just a game to you, a means to an end? Jasmine's response was a mixture of defensiveness and remorse. She spoke of her pain, her anger at her ex, and how she had lost herself in the pursuit of revenge. Her admission was a bitter pill, laced with the poison of truth and the clarity of hindsight. As we navigated the tangled web of our actions and their consequences, I grappled with my own identity, teetering on the brink of the persona Jasmine had crafted for me and the person I truly felt I was. It was a journey of introspection, of peeling away the layers of imposed expectations to uncover the essence of my being. The resolution came slowly, like the first light of dawn after a long, dark night. I realized that my identity was not a costume to be changed at whim, but a deeply rooted tree, its branches swaying but its trunk steadfast. I found a middle ground, a place where I could appreciate Jasmine's perspective without losing myself in it. I embraced aspects of the new persona that felt genuine, discarding what felt imposed or unnatural. Addressing the consequences of our actions meant dealing with the stolen credit card, a stark reminder of the day's recklessness. Together, we faced the reality of the situation, taking steps to rectify the wrongs, a process that was as much about healing our friendship as it was about resolving the legal and ethical breaches. In the end, the balance I found was not just between differing wardrobes, but between friendship and self-respect, between external influences and internal truths. The journey, fraught with conflict and confusion, led to a deeper understanding of myself and the complexities of human relationships, marking a chapter of growth and transformation in the unwritten book of my life.